On today's episode of Homebrew Terrain, I'm going to take this cardboard box that I got from somewhere, and I'm going to turn this into a series of trenches for your soldiers. Dun, dun, dun. Here on Homebrew Terrain. Hey, my name is Aaron, and welcome to Homebrew Terrain. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the first step on this plan to make this thing into the trenches is we are going to have to get rid of the dead. Uh, right, that was really bad. <laughs> and I apologize to all cultures that I just insulted. Anyway, uh, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna get rid of the tape off this cardboard box. We start off by using my handy dandy exacto blade. That's much better looking, isn't it? And we're gonna slice this bad boy right like that, because we can. And then we're just gonna peel this off. Now, tape usually has a little bit of a lip on it like this. And you can just peel it off. And sure, it's gonna tear off a lot of that cardboard, but you know what? Who cares? Not me. Okay, so we're gonna get rid of that. There we go. We're moving. And then of course, if there's a UPS tracking label on here, like this, uh, you're gonna have to remove that too. Um, now, if you wanna use this piece, it's gonna require you to remove the label. If you don't wanna use this piece, then just trim it off and Toss it away, and you don't really need to use it. Um, so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna open up the box and flatten it down like this. See how it's all flat and pretty? Okay, and then what we're gonna do is in every single cardboard box, there is a joint, a glue joint at the end where they stick it together. And we're gonna very carefully peel that joint apart. See how careful that was? There we go. And that's gonna lay the box flat. Now, from here, we're gonna take the scissors and we're gonna cut along here and we're gonna cut along here and we're gonna start getting these flat panels. And that's exactly what we want. Plus, we've got all of these little bad boys on the ends here that we can use. So we're gonna have a whole bunch of little flat panels and that's how we're gonna start. So let me go ahead and do that. Notice that I'm not using my wife's scissors. But notice that I have them just in case I need to. Ooh, snap! One handy trick that I want to show you guys really quickly here is taking this bad boy. So when you're cutting the scissors, usually you want to cut them like this, and that means that when you get to here, your hands are usually bending the cardboard as you go. So to avoid that, what I do is I turn my scissors on the side like this. So I cut like this, and then I turn my scissors sideways, and so it's almost flush with the box, and I cut like that. And it seems to work much better because it causes the cardboard to not to have to crush itself in so much. So a little bit of pulling there, and then like that. And it comes through much cleaner. At least that's the theory anyway. And of course I did it on this piece, which is garbage. Now, That's what happens when you have gribby meat hooks instead of, you know, normal hands, like normal people. So now we have this little pile of cardboard. And this is exactly what we want. And of course, there's this label. The label. Curse you, the label! Curse you! There we go. Yeah! Phew. Okay. <laughs> So now we have, now we have this cardboard flat and ready to use. Da -da -da -da. Okay, now what we're gonna do here is we need a model. Because like I said before, I do a lot of measuring here using the exact models that I'm gonna use. I have my uh, Tech Priest Dominus here. I like him because he's got the big base. And uh, I have my Escher because, you know, everyone needs an Escher with a shotgun. And if you don't have an Escher with a shotgun, then you need to get one. Uh, then, of course, uh, to make that even cooler, I've got a uh, cultist with a shotgun. Now, the reason I have two different guys here is because, again, I have uh, the, the Necromunda bases are slightly larger than the regular 40k 
uh, base. I'm using these guys not only for the width of the base, but also the height of the model, because in this particular case, the trenches are gonna matter. How high you make your trenches are gonna be based on the models that you're really wanting to put in them, uh, and, and how covered you want them to be. Uh, you can make your trenches, you know, like two and a half, three inches tall, and so that way they're completely covered and they'll never be seen, but you don't want to do that. You you probably want to have it so that they can lean over the side, you know, and crack a few shots off, especially if they're a really awesome cultist with a shotgun. Uh, so that's that's a thing. I'm going to say cultist with a shotgun is probably the awesomest of the awesome. So we'll use him uh, as, as one of the shorter models. Uh, we'll be able to use him as sort of the, uh, the basis for uh, what we're going to do here. And because I'm lazy, I'm doing this the lazy way. I'm going to take this guy here and I'm going to put him into the cardboard and I'm going to use my handy dandy pen here and just uh, kind of trace around the base. It doesn't have to be perfect, it's just a little mark on the cardboard like this so that I can see it. And then I'll come over here and I'll do the same thing, da 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 da. And then I'll come over here and I'll do the same thing. And uh, you have to have sound effects, da 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 da, just like that. Okay, great. Then I'm going to come over here with my ruler, my handy dandy ruler. And there you have it, a trench. That's all you need to know. Wait, there's a little bit more. Okay, so from here, what we're going to do, because it's a straight line, it's not all that big of a deal, we're just going to take our X-Acto blade here, and we're going to slice it right down the length. There's always the end piece that doesn't want to cut. And there we have it, a trench. Perfect, right? It's, it's No? Okay, still not good enough. This this has actually got some scrubbly bits here on the end that I just I just don't like them. So I'm going to uh, cut them off just because they're scrubbly and I don't like the way they look. Okay, so this is relatively good enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not perfect, this guy probably won't be able to fit in it very well, but at least, you know, hey, whatever, I tried. Whatever, I'm just gonna keep going because that's just the way I am. So, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a smaller piece of cardboard like this. This is the floor of the trench right here, the part that people are gonna walk on. Uh, so what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna come to here and I'm gonna mark where it is, like this, right? So then I know where that is. So I'm gonna come on here and make sure that I get it all lined up and draw a line. There's my line. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I need to measure the models themselves. How tall do I want this trench to be? Because this is the wall that's going to come up this way, and then I'm gonna glue another wall that angles out like that. Oh my goodness, you can already see how this is going. It's really simple, right? So I don't want this thing to be any bigger than his uh, shoulder. Like, I want him to be able to see over it. So I'm gonna put a mark right here next to his shoulder, and I know you can't really see that because it's like super far away but you'll kind of get the idea of what I'm doing here when I bring it up close to the camera. Um, I'm gonna take this guy here, and I'm gonna put him against this dude here. And when I line up the base to the piece there, you see that little mark that I made, and that's how I did it. So it's basically up to his shoulder. So then I'm gonna come to here. I'm gonna grab my ruler. And this part right here is gonna be the piece that goes along one side. So I'm gonna take my uh, X-Acto blade here. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna use it as a template to make another one. Yay, because we gotta have walls on both sides of the trenches. You don't have to if it's gonna be like an open pit area, like say this was much larger, like uh, a landing area or a cleared out area, you can have like wall trench walls on either side of it. But since we're making a small trench, I want one on both sides. Because that's just how I am. Now I have my two outer walls, right here and right here, like this. Ta-da! See how awesome that is? And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my handy dandy hot glue gun. Alright, so that piece is glued in. 
and then the other side. Now that we have the bones of the trench going on here, what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna take a piece of cardboard and we're gonna try to figure out how, how slanted do you want this to be? Do you want the uh, your other models to be able to storm the, you know, the, the trenches or do you want it to be pretty steeply angled so that, you know, nothing can get in or out? Um, I'm gonna take mine and I'm gonna make it kind of more sweepy. I'm gonna cut this bad boy in half here and make it a little more steep. So then it's gonna go like this, like so. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the hot glue and we're just gonna hot glue this in place here, like that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this side, this is the other side of that same cut, and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna hot glue it right here. Did you know that hot glue bounces when you roll a big ball of it and you drop it against boing, 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 and it bounces? Like, uh, usually it bounces into places that you can't get to easily to clean up the mess that you've made after you're done, and then people get mad at you for, you know, making that mess in the first place. Um, just thought I'd point that out. Okay. And there you have it. The trench so far. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create the front pieces here and here. So normally you could take this particular piece right here and you can actually measure out all these angles, you know, and get it all just right and then, you know, put it on a piece of cardboard and do it that way. But I found the easiest way to do this, I mean really the easiest way to do this and because I'm lazy, I'm just going to take hot glue here and I'm going to hot glue it here and I'm going to hot glue along here like a bees. And then I'm just going to take a piece of cardboard like this and stick it on there lamb which is like that and just let that cool and then uh, and then I'm just gonna take my exacto knife and I'm gonna run it along there and cut this piece off <laughs> why because I'm lazy unless of course you want to do something cool with it again when you're making homebrew terrain I cannot stress enough that you are limited only by your imagination if you want to have like Cool little wall pieces that come out, little turrets or boxes. You can even put a little pill box here or something cool. You know, whatever you want to do. Um, I don't want to do that right now because I don't. That's just the way I want to roll. So I'm going to take this piece right here and I'm going to trim it off as soon as it's cooled up. And I'm going to do the same thing on all of these other sides. So now that I have the pieces all glued on place on the ends here, I'm going to go ahead and use my X-Acto knife here to uh, just uh, cut off, or I should say my hobby knife, because I guess an X-Acto knife is a name brand, but it's the same thing. So I'm going to use my hobby knife here to just trim these pieces off and call it good. As you can see here, I have trimmed off the uh, excess pieces on the end there, and so there you have it, a perfect trench. And now I can take my little dudes here and I throw them into the little holes here and make them do the trenches run. Yay! Um, so they can sit out here and they can pew pew at the bad guys, and even crazy enough, I can actually throw uh, my Tech Priest Dominus inside here and move him around as well. So it actually worked out really well. Uh, I got the right sizes after all, and so all of my dudes can go into the trench. Now the cool part here is that we're not quite done yet. We're going to add a little bit more flourish to this so that it looks a little bit better and more, a little more authentic. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to take our Elmer's glue. And we're gonna throw a whole bunch inside here, and then we're gonna fill it up with dirt or sand. Now I happen to have a bag of sand from the dollar store that I used to do this, 
and uh, it's really cool beans. So you're definitely going to want to use Elmer's glue for this and not hot glue because hot glue dries way too fast and it doesn't work very good for this. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your Elmer's glue and you're just going to drip it down inside here. Lack of these. Let's get messy. And then we're going to run fingers in here and get it all goopy. Because goopy is good. And I'm going to take my sand. See all my lovely sand here? I know you love it. And uh, I have this bag of sand and I'm just going to pour it into the middle here. Like that. And then I'm going to tap it off back into the bag. Like this. And the parts that didn't get caught up into the middle of the trench there are going to go back into the bag. Now some of it is going to go back on here, so we didn't go the other way, so we're going to go the other way. Get that all stuck on there. And then we'll take a little bit of sand here and kind of smear it around on the outside of this thing. Because why wouldn't we? Like that. And now we have trenches. How cool is that, right? And this is a basic trench right here. And so what we can do now is once the glue dries, uh, we can take our little guys in here and, and they're gonna look awesome when they go in there. Now we've got this really cool piece of terrain. This is a really cool trench and it looks awesome. And we're gonna be able to use this to do all kinds of cool bean stuff. Um, and you think, well, I wanna make it longer. So what do you do? You build a second piece, boom. And then you have a really long one and that's really cool. And now you can make trenches as long as you want, or you can make them as small as you want. Now I recommend always making them in smaller segments. Now I didn't put the corner pieces on this one here yet, but I will. Uh, but I recommend making them in smaller segments so you can just kind of stack them together and make as many as you want. Or, you know, you're going to ask the question because everybody does. Well, what if I want them to run this way? Like, you know, because I got to have a piece of terrain or there's a, something here and I want to run the trenches around it. It doesn't work if you. Uh, so what are you gonna do? What do we? What do we do? Oh, boom! Why the heck do you make that? Well, I'm so glad you asked. To make this bad monster here, you're gonna need some measurements. As you can see, I drew segments in there, and you're gonna need to know the length of this, the length of this, and the length of this. Now, as it so happens. The length of this is two inches, and the length of this is two inches, and the length of this is two inches. Oh, what? It's almost like I, I knew that I was going to do this beforehand. <laughs> so it's two, four, and six, which is really important, because those are the measurements that you're going to use to make this. What you're going to do is you're going to start with a point, and then you're going to measure out two inches, and you're going to make another mark. Then you're going to measure two more inches and you're going to make another mark. And then you're going to measure two more inches and you're going to make another mark. That's six inches for all of you who are paying attention. Two, four, six. See how that works? Using a compass and a protractor is so much easier than what I'm actually doing now. But since I didn't actually have one when I filmed this, I decided that I wanted to go ahead and just use the regular ruler. I know that the ruler is probably the hardest way to do this, but I went ahead and did it anyway because that's pretty much all I had at the time. But yeah, using a compass and a protractor, probably the best way to do it. So what you're gonna do is you can take a piece of cardboard like this one. Then you're gonna take your ruler and you're gonna measure a point, right? And then this is your point right here. And you're just gonna draw a line. Woohoo! See how I did that diagonally? Diagonally. Uh, and the reason I did it diagonally like this is because I'm gonna do an archway around it. Uh, so what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna measure out from here uh, two inches. And that's the two inches mark right there. See how I made that mark? Isn't that wonderful? And then from here, I'm just going to measure another two inches. Or if I just leave this here, which I could do, I'm going to measure out to four inches, which is right here. How cool is that? Then I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to measure to six inches, which is right here. Okay, cool. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that same point right here and I'm going to draw another line. Whee! I'm just going to actually draw it out to six inches because that way I know that that's where I'm stopping. And then I'm gonna draw here another line, like this. Because, you know, whatever, and I drew past six inches, so I suck. So I'm gonna go two, four, and six, like that, right? And then I come to this line here, and I go four and two, because I forgot to draw them the last time, and I'm awesome. 
and then I'm gonna come over here like this. Again, making sure that you keep this part here or this part here on the end always at that same point. And you're just gonna draw a line out. Whee! You don't have to say wee if you don't want to. I know, it's kind of like unmanly and some people out there are just gonna be like, um, I'm not saying wee. So fine, you can say PlayStation. You know, I don't care. It's, it's your, your business, whatever you wanna do. And then we're gonna draw to six here, like this, and then mark the four and the two. And then we're gonna come to here and we're gonna mark the six inches. And we're gonna mark the six and the four and the two. Now what I'm doing here is I'm drawing these lines until I come to a perfect 90 degree angle like this. So if I come to here and I'm drawing the 90, I've come up to six like this. And I mark the two and the four and there you go. See how I did that? So now what I've done is I've made all these really cool lines and they most of them stop at the six like this and like this and like this. Now this is the cool part. This part here, so I draw this little circle around here. Now again, there's a really easy way to do this by the way. If you want to take a piece of string and measure it out six inches, you can put the little, a little toothpick or a nail or something right here and then just go shoop and then just shoop, shoop, and you don't even have to say shoop, but you could do it, because you know, that if you wanted. So then you'd have the marks that I'm making here. I just have a ruler and I'm lazy, and that's the mark of a true homebrew crafting person is that they're ridiculously lazy. Uh, so from here, what you're gonna do now is you're going to cut out this two inch piece here, right, right, are you with me? You're gonna cut this piece out, and this is gonna be the floorboard. This is gonna be the, the inside piece right here so if i would put this up here against this like this it's going to look kind of like that see so this piece right here is going to end up being folded up and this piece right here is going to be folded down <clears throat> so that way when i put them together like this i can slap this guy in the middle of it boom and then if i move my coffee mug here uh then it'll look something like this so yeah that's that's how you make trenches and uh, congratulations, you, you now know how to make trenches and you can make a whole table full of trenches if you want to do that. That's, that's a thing. I have taken the liberty of gluing all of my uh, pieces together that I have made. Um, and as you can see, I've got a really cool track that runs through. And uh, one of the things that I did just really quickly to show you guys is on these curved pieces here I just grabbed a flat piece of cardboard and I cut it at a 90 degree and I curved it around here and I cut it so it was just perfect 90 degree and I just slapped it on the top and glued it up so that it would blend more smoothly here now the reason why I glued mine all together is because I actually have a project in mind that I'm working on like I said before I recommend very highly that you keep it in separate pieces unless you have something very specific that you're working on but it's all built as you can see uh, I've got some of the sand on it and it starts to look really cool and everything and the reason why I wanted it to have the sand on it before we did the rest of this is because I wanted a nice base foundation for it. Um, I went to the craft store, or the dollar store, I should say, and uh, I picked up these craft sticks. Yay! Uh, they're called craft sticks, but really they're just popsicle sticks, right? They're just two different sizes of popsicle sticks. Now, popsicle sticks, or ice lollies, or whatever you want to call them, tongue depressors. I, uh, anyway, um, these are really, really cool, and they go uh, really well with a lot of different models. You can use them to make all kinds of boards and plankings and all kinds of cool bean stuff. Now, I'm going to use both of these and some toothpicks and some other stuff to create the flourish for this uh, lovely affair. I'm going to take my scissors here and I'm just going to slice open this bad boy. And we're going to use this because whenever you know, if, you, if you've ever been in the trenches like during World War II, because obviously there's a lot of people around here who, uh, who've done that. Um, Seriously though, uh, if you've ever been in the trenches or in any kind of a, an underground work, uh, you're gonna find that, that it gets really muddy and really gross and really hard to walk around, especially if there's a lot of people walking around down there. So if there's people walking through the trenches a lot, uh, the, the ground that you're gonna end up walking on is gonna get real hard to walk on real fast. So what they do, because um, most trench systems are very, uh, is stalwart defensive situations where they need to have lots of concrete and uh, they put little lights down and uh, usually some sofas and places to stop and you know hey a little coffee shop right off on the side here where they can uh, make that happen uh, no that's actually not what they do they actually just slap boards down they just throw boards down into the here and then, then they run boards along the outside so that way it won't like collapse in on you 
Um, and so because I want this to kind of go along with my Necromunda terrain or my Kill Team terrain, I'm gonna add a little bit of sci-fi element to it, but with using craft sticks and things like that, you can make this World War II, you can make this very, very authentic however you want to very quickly. Uh, but I'm gonna add a lot of terrain flourish to this because I want it to be a specific thing. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna start with the craft sticks and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these craft sticks, I'm gonna break them up, I'm actually gonna bust the paper that holds them together which is you know woohoo there they go all over everything because awesome but you save that paper for later you can use it so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to take the craft sticks i'm just going to break them i don't even want them to be uh, i want them to have this like really cool sort of uh crunchy edge to them right because you just break them like that oh it's so terrible and see how it's got this really smooth rounded edge we don't want that we want to just bust it and we want them to be all different lengths and we want them to be all kind of, of wonky and so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna distress it because even this is still really, really pretty wood. If you were to put this down, this would not be representative of a Yankee plank that had been thrown into a ditch and been stomped all over. So what we do is we take our X-Acto knife here and, uh, and we don't cut ourselves, but we just scratch up the wood. Just cut gouges in it and, and scratch it up as much as you want to. And then later when we add paint to this, these gouges and scratches and uh, cut chunks and stuff are gonna look really, really slick. It's like, you know, almost like you intended to do that. Uh, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're basically just gonna lay it down inside inside the trench, thusly. So that way uh, it creates this planking effect throughout the trench. And then when we go back to paint over it, it's gonna be really cool. Now we're gonna use a little bit of this and we're gonna use a little bit of the sand and again, we're going to use the Elmer's glue. So I'm going to put the Elmer's on here, and I'm going to sand it all up, and it's going to look like it's been there for a little while. And uh, we'll, I'll show you what that looks like here as I uh, get all the stuff ready to go. So I'm going to get these ready to go first. I'm probably going to need about seven or 800, and then uh, we'll, we'll go from there. Also, using the bigger planks. You're like, why did you get the bigger popsicle stick? Um, popsicle sticks, I said that. Um, the reason why I got the bigger ones so I have the bigger popsicle sticks and you're like, why did I get the bigger ones? Because what you do with these guys is they can boards and planking, but these are a little bit thinner than those guys are. And what I'm going to do here is exactly the same thing that I did with the other ones. I'm going to bust them up so they get all kind of looking like that on the end, right? Only the next thing I'm going to do, but I'm going to take these bad boys and just use my scissors. Yes, scissors. And I'm going to cut them along the bottom just like that. So they got a nice flat edge, and then I'm gonna use them to line the walls of the of the trenches. Cause you have to line the walls of the trenches. They don't want it to be perfectly lined either, by the way. You want you want some of the rocks and dirt and junk to stick through them. Cause you know, again, this is this is kind of something that would have been thrown down. Now, in, again, in Necromunda, this would have been something that would have been thrown down uh, you know, for probably four or five hundred years and it was forgotten and it's all rusted and gross and falling apart. But anyway, so the flat part's flat on purpose because you're going to stick glue on that and you're going to stick it down there and you can put dirt around it. So it's going to look like when you're done, it's going to look like there's dirt around it and it's going to be really cool. And fix. I'm going to use the bigger popsicle sticks for the walls, for the wall lining, and I'm going to use the smaller ones for the, the flooring. I have my whole thing set up here. I've got all my pieces laid out and I've got my... Uh, trench line here that I'm going to put stuff into. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my hot glue gun here and I'm just going to throw a dab of hot glue down inside there just like that. And then I'm going to take a piece of this terrain, this uh, one of these pieces here and just stick it onto the hot glue. Wham! Just like that. Now I'm going to be slathering this whole thing in a lot of other glue. So the hot glue is basically just to anchor stuff whilst I'm uh, getting everything else ready. Perfection is exactly what we're trying to avoid here. So you can actually see here, I'm overlapping the pieces a little bit just so that you can, oh, it's really hard to control this thing here. So there we go. So you can kind of see that the pieces are sort of overlapping a little bit. So that way it kind of looks like they're just sort of slapdash together which kind of adds to the charm and the appeal of it all. This 
how you're gonna do the inner workings of the wall planks. And you're gonna do that all the way down. So now that we have all the wall pieces in place here, um, I'm gonna show you how to do the flooring. It's really simple. You're just gonna take the hot glue gun, just like this bad boy right here, and you're gonna run a bead down the middle like this and you're going to stick the floor piece on that you've broken up. I showed you earlier how we broke it up and we're going to do that with it. And, and you don't want to lay these out so that they're even or that they even look like they're supposed to be lined up or they even had any sort of thought to this at all uh, when they were sticking it in. So you want to make them different sizes and you want to make them different shapes and just break them off like this uh, and then get your X-Acto knife and then uh, just distress the wood so that you can see that it's been cut and chipped and walked over for the last, you know, couple hundred years. The wood's probably petrified by now, even if it is wood, if it ever really was wood, because let's just talk about Necromunda and the fact that nothing is what it seems there. And you want gaps like this. See, there's a little bit of a gap there. You kind of want that. Uh, so we're gonna do that now uh, if you wanted to go even further you could take the bigger sticks like if you just wanted to buy a bag of sticks like you could actually break these up in half um, like this and these work just as well uh, for the same the same way you can just take these now these are a little bit thinner so they're gonna add like a difference in size and depth to the flooring which is fine um, again I like to distress it all up so the the paint has uh, somewhere to wash into so you can get the recesses of the wood and make it look really like this was supposed to be like this over hundreds of years it's of abuse and uh, yeah that <laughs> so then you just take this right here and you stick it in like this now again you're gonna see that there's gonna be a difference in uh, in height this is going to be much closer to the ground and see look you can totally tell totally look look, look at that i mean it's like oh wow it's glaring no actually it's not you probably didn't even notice and had i not said anything you probably wouldn't have noticed at all but you would have noticed when you put your models on it though because they'll be a little bit wobbly in between but we're going to cover it up with some other stuff anyway so like glues and things like that so you're not really going to see it too badly uh all right so moving right along i'm going to go ahead and do all of that on the inside here and then i'm going to show you what i'm going to do on the outside can see that I have all the wood planking put in there and I have all of the uh, the flooring kind of just haphazardly stuck in there which is really important and uh, you don't really get a good opportunity to understand how cool this is until you see a dude charging down at you in the trenches um, which of course is pretty cool yay trenches anyway so the wood planking is really important and so is the planking on the ground. Now what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to start adding little dabs of glue on here and just sprinkling sand on it and uh, making it look like the sand was layered around. And then I'm going to go back through and I'm going to add some forward defensive structures uh, by with which I mean toothpicks. Now we're going to build some forward defensive structures here. Uh, and the reason I say that is because, you know, you always want to put like a little blank board along here. Make sure it's level as you can because there's always some jag wagon that's going to want to stick their model right there when they're charging up the side or, you know, they're going to stand out here and be like, oh, yes, we should destroy you. Anyway, but, you, you know, you want it to do that. So you want it to be able to set the model there and have it not have wobbly model syndrome. So what we're going to do here is we're going to build basically a decking that runs uh, from here all the way down uh, along the front. And, and then we're going to put some uh, toothpicks in front of that like gates. Uh, and and the way the way we're gonna do that is really really easy to do We're going to take some hot glue and take these two guys here And we're gonna throw some hot glue on this and we're just gonna hot glue this bad boy on here like that And it'll look like look like planking and uh, It looked like a deck and here's the forward planking piece that I was talking about. This is gonna be the forward uh, Defensive structure. This is the bottom all I did was uh, take the two popsicle sticks and I broke off the ends and then are the bigger ones anyway and then I glued the smaller ones as cross planks and I put little uh, glue dots to look like rivets and uh, that way it looks like it's all riveted in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this right here on the front part of the trenches and I'm going to use these to brace it up through here simply by running this down through the cardboard a little bit and then bracing it up underneath the, uh, the planks and it'll look like this. So here we see the forward battlements completed where I just threw on some uh, toothpicks there and uh, we got it all rocked and stocked and ready to rock. Um, uh, and a busy little dude here. So you can see here, uh, you got your trench works here and you got your little guy 
you know, Duder doing Duder stuff. And then if he wants to uh, jump up here into the happy world of whatever land, see, and that's what it looks like. And so from there, you have trench works that uh, that does it. Now, of course, like I was saying before, if you keep these in small segments, then uh, you can do them each in, in small segments and then put them together as you need to. And then these battlements can be as big or as small as you want. And like I said, in this particular case, I actually have a particular plan in mind. One of the things that I did here is I took those large popsicle sticks and I put them along the bottom here. And... Uh, and I created a, a more of a planking method that I'm going to use here. And this is this is really important for me uh, because what I'm going to do eventually here is I'm going to buttress this up against um, another piece that's going to come over the top of it and become the command structure, uh, which we're going to go over in another video. So now uh, there you go. The uh, the actual trench works is completed here. I'm going to go ahead and throw some uh, some glue onto this, some uh, Elmer's glue and some sand. And so when I'm adding the sand here, you can see that what I've done is I've added glue in just kind of random places throughout the bottom here. And you can kind of see where it's all at scattered randomly. And then what I do is I take a pinch of sand here and I just pour the sand on the top and then uh, shake it around and then pour it out. And then what you get is a really cool setup where the sand starts to build up where the glue was and that's how you do it. And here you see with the sand in it so what I did was I just threw the glue down inside there the Elmer's glue and then just poured the sand on top of it and it looks like this and then when I'm done here I'm gonna go ahead and paint this all up so you won't see the sparkly pretty sparkly one that was actually because of Christmas uh, I use this sand to make a Christmas present and I needed sparklies in it so I just mix in the sparklies but which is fine because um, I'm gonna paint over the whole thing so you're not really gonna see it uh, but yeah so that's 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 the thing and so here we go and now that you see what it looks like uh, this is the back side right so it looks there right see and you see the trench works and how cool that is and and here we have a quick overview of our total flyby here of what it looks like completely sanded up and ready to rock and roll and as you can see those boards down inside there uh, they're all buried in the sand and they look like they're supposed to be all dirty and gross and they've been there for a bajillion years and that's what it looks like so join me in my next video here um, when we paint this bad monster up now the other thing that's really really cool of course uh, is the fact that um, if you do this in segments like I said before you can uh, build this as big or as small as you want it to be I mean you only need one section of this to do one little thing or if you want to make it super long or super big or however you want to do it and that's the cool thing about homebrew terrain, is that you can make whatever you want to make. So join me in my next video, and I'll see you later. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed yourself here on Homebrew Terrain.